Hey there, welcome to another episode of the Jones and Ford Show. I'm your host, Spencer Jones, and I'm so excited to have you here today because today we are talking about mindfulness. We're taking on this big subject of mindfulness because, you know, being mindful is a huge part of living your life to the max. And as you know, the point of our show, the goal, the mission of the Jones and Four show is to offer you tools, strategies, ways to help you get the most out of life so you can live your life to the max. So let's take on this big topic, this big mindfulness topic. And I have three strategies to help you be more mindful. But before we jump into there, if you could do me a huge favor, could you please like and subscribe to our show? Maybe you're listening to this on your favorite podcast platform. Awesome. Please like and subscribe there. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe and leave a review if you can. I appreciate all the reviews that you offer because it helps boost our rating in all the systems that listen to this. So we can help and inspire more people. So thank you so much for your support. And if you know someone that likes these podcasts, please share it with them. Send it to them in an email and a text. And email is probably really outdated. A text message, a message, uh, I don't know, some way. Share out our show. Maybe share it on social media and invite friends to join and listen. Because the more people we can impact, the more lives we can change, the more good we can put into the world. All right, let me get a sip of tea. Again, mixing up, I know, different today, not coffee, but tea's just as good. So let me get a sip of tea and then we'll talk about mindfulness. Awesome. Thank you for holding with me for the, through my tea break. So mindfulness, what is mindfulness? This has become a buzzword. At least I've, I've noticed it becoming more of a buzzword lately. But, oh, mindful, mindfulness this. Oh, being mindful. Being blah, 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 right? It's thrown out on social media, on news, on meditations. Mindfulness. Yay! Mindfulness. Well, what is it? What does it mean? There's lots of definitions of it out there. So let me share mine with you. To me, being mindful is being aware of you and your energy along with other people's energy and see how they interact and aware of how they interact. Plus, you're not judging others. Plus, don't judge yourself, don't judge others. So I need to work on finding a way to really consolidate this saying. So maybe if you if you are a word smith and you're really good at coming up with phrases, let me know. Send me a message. Drop me a comment. Let me find a good, more succinct way to say it. So I'll say it one more time. So mindfulness to me means being aware of you and your energy and other people's energy and how they play together and not judging anyone anyone's thoughts, beliefs, feelings, emotions, don't judge them. That has to be one of the hardest parts, <laughs> if I'm going to be honest. Sure, I could be aware of my energy, of your energy, of all these other people's. I could be aware of that, and I could see how they interact. Cool. I got that. We're good. Oh, crap. Now that means I, I, I can't judge? Oh, dang. That sucks, because... I like judging, you know, I I've, 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 I've judge people. I, might look, I can't believe you look like that. Why would you do that? Who could imagine doing something that lame or whatever? I used to judge people left and right. And guess what? I still struggle with it at times. I hate, hate to admit it, but I do. I struggle with not judging others at times. But I will say I've gotten a lot better, a lot better of letting it go, of letting go of that judgment because it doesn't serve me, it doesn't serve them. And let me share this. When I started to let it go, when I started to not judge at all or nearly as much even, I got happier. I found my positivity levels 
rose a lot. I found my happiness grow. I found my overall energy increase because I wasn't judging. It's this weight, it's this little negative thing in your life that you might not even recognize or realize that it's negative, but it is. So it's hard to let it go. So let me challenge you today, as you're listening to this for the rest of the day, try to just be aware of when you're judging people. I'm not telling you not to judge them. I'm asking you to just be aware of when you are. Realize how much we judge others. And then make a choice. Are you going to keep judging them? Or are you going to be, nope, I'm sorry, I forgive me. And then you have to say it out loud. You used to say it to yourself, I forgive myself. Or, you know, well, we don't need that. It's all good. Moving on. But be aware. Be aware of it. So that's a fun little challenge I'll, I'll lay down. It's amazing to see that. So let me offer three ways to help you be more mindful. How you can make sure that you are being aware of your energy, of other people's energy, and working at not judging them. So it's hard at times to be mindful, right? As I said, mindfulness has become this buzz word. It's become this word that, that's being thrown around a lot. And now you know the meaning of it, at least my meaning of it. I encourage you to find your own and develop your own meaning or definition of it. But it's hard sometimes because we are in a society, especially in our Western culture, that is go, 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 go. Constantly go. Don't slow down. Don't stop. Just go. Instant gratification. Let's do this. Let's go here. Let's make this happen. And that's life. I was raised that way. I still love have instant gratification. I love to just go, go, go. But it doesn't serve me all the time. At times, we need to slow down. We need to focus our mind. And be mindful of our energy, other people's energy, and where we're going. But what I'm saying is life makes it hard. So you need to be very conscientious, conscientious, there we go. You need to think about it. You need to plan for it and be intentional about being mindful, if that makes sense. So I suggest intentionally having times in your day where you can be mindful, where you can be practiced being mindful. We'll talk about different strategies here in a little bit. But find specific times in your day where it just becomes habit almost for you to slow down and then stop and think and then integrate them through other parts of your day. So that becomes not just a habit, but it becomes a way of life. Okay, so uh, one way to, to be mindful is to stop and breathe. Whatever you are doing, whatever it is, stop and breathe. Now for me, when... When I start to feel my blood boil, if something starts getting under my skin, whatever, if I start getting anxious, this is when this one goes off in my head. And I say, Spencer, stop and breathe. Stop and breathe. Because then when that happens, when I, when I feel that anxiety start to go, my, or my anger start to, you know, brew, I tell myself, stop. So I stop. I stop everything I am doing. I put my pencil down, I put, I sometimes even put my head down, and I close my eyes, and I say breathe. So then I breathe in through my nose, and out through my nose or mouth, your choice, but I breathe in through my nose or mouth, and I focus my mind on my breath. I focus my mind away from all the other crap, from all the stuff that's distracting me, or ang making me angry, or anxious, or whatever, and I bring it in whew, to my breath. And then I just focus on my inhale and exhale. I start to th become mindful of my breath. And at, then after a couple of breaths, I might find a couple of gratitudes that I'm, that I'm grateful for in my life. And I breathe those in and I, and I feel them. Okay? And then, then I can address whatever was concerning me. Whatever was making me feel rushed, worried, upset, whatever, I can address it and go, okay, now from a calmer place, 
I can take this on. But when I start to feel that way, I stop and I breathe. I focus on the breath and maybe I find gratitudes and then I move on. So take the time to stop and breathe. It can be at any time in your day, but again, for me, it's really when I notice I'm starting to go, 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 go. I feel rushed. I feel worried. I feel anxious. I feel angry, whatever. When, right when that starts to go, that's when I hit it. That's when I stop and breathe. But maybe you're starting out with this. You've never done it before. And you don't realize that, or you don't remember, I should say, to stop and breathe until you're already anxious, until you're already angry or whatever, right? You're already in it. That's okay. You applaud yourself, first of all, because you realize you need to stop and breathe, regardless of when you realized it. Applaud yourself because you realized it. Then stop and breathe and do the whole thing, right? Stop, breathe, focus on your breath, find your gratitudes. And then calm yourself so that you can address whatever you need to address. It doesn't matter where it happens in the sequence, as long as you do it. And that could even be afterwards. You can stop, breathe, and reflect on it. That's awesome. That works great. Obviously, it's better if you never get to the height of that anger, the anxiety, stress, whatever. It's better if you don't get to the height of it. So if you get it right away in the beginning, that obviously helps. That's ideal but I get it. It's hard. Sometimes I'm great at it. Sometimes I'm not. Just so you know. Hey everyone, Spencer Jones, and I'm sorry to butt in like this, but I'll keep this really short and sweet. I want to help you live your life to the max. I want to help you chase your passions to get the most out of life. And I wrote a book to help you do that. It's my latest book. It's called Chase Your Passions. It's available on Amazon, and I know it can help you change your life and help you live your life to the max. Basically, in the book, I walk you through how to create the ultimate roadmap to success. Whatever that success looks like for you, it walks you through it. Everybody has a different roadmap because everybody's dream, everybody's goal is different. So everybody's roadmap is going to be different. But this book helps you, guides you in creating your personal roadmap to success. So folks, don't delay. Get on Amazon and just look up chase your passions put spencer jones in there too just to be safe so it pulls up right away or go to my website spencermjones.com and get your copy of it today and heck get the priorities of practice journal with it because that companion journal mm, that makes it that much sweeter all right folks thanks for listening I told you i keep it short and sweet catch you soon all right the second way to help you be mindful is when you're eating so let eating be a cue for you so when you eat eat mindfully. So I'm currently, as I'm recording this, I'm currently reading the book Think Like a Monk by Jay Shetty. Loving the book so far, by the way. Awesome book. You need to check it out. It's incredible. But in there, he offers a quote that one of his monks shared with him. I'll see if I can quote it properly. I don't have it in front of me. Um, but it goes like this. It is, eat your drink and drink your food. Eat your drink and drink your food. Well, that sounds kind of weird, right? What does that mean? Well, when, excuse me, when he says eat your drink, many times when we drink, we just drink passively. We don't think about it. It could be our coffee. It could be our water. It could be whatever you, you're drinking. You can just drink it and not think about it. But take time to savor it. Take time to, to take a sip of that, you know, let it sit in your mouth for a little bit. Enjoy the flavors of it instead of just swallowing it right away. I'm going to practice it right now with my tea. I have a lemon ginger tea today. It's amazing. So let me take a sip and enjoy it. I encourage you to do the same thing with whatever. If you have a drink by you, just right now, it could be water and that's great. Mm. So good. Chew your drink, savor it, enjoy it, uh, and then drink your food. That mean, and what they mean by that is chew your food, enjoy it, savor the flavors. Don't just chew it a couple times and swallow it. Just you have to, you know, gulp it down. No, food is there to be enjoyed. Food is fuel for you, so enjoy it. Especially when you're eating natural, healthy foods, right? That's, I mean, you know that's what I promote. 
Get rid of the crap. Get rid of the junk food that doesn't serve you and your body. Your body's a machine. You want it to function as well as possible, right? You want your uh, your car to run as strong and as well-oiled machine. Well, your body is a machine. Give it the fuel it needs. Healthy, natural foods, right? Less processed. And maybe occasionally you have a something naughty that's not healthy but and savor it and savor all the healthy foods too so that you enjoy the flavor of it you enjoy the time spent eating it so take time to be present when you're eating and be mindful about what you're eating so for me I, this is one thing. I was raised where I ate fast. I grew up eating fast, just poof, food was gone. And I've been working at slowing down. My wife's family eats slower. So when I met her, I had to, I wanted to be polite. So I focused on slowing down. And now I'm really working at slowing down and being even more mindful when I eat. Some days I'm great, some days I'm not, right? I'm not perfect, but I'm working at it. And I'll tell you, when I, when I enjoy the food, when I enjoy the company I'm with, when Katie and I are sitting and having a wonderful breakfast or lunch or dinner together, oh man, it's so nice. We have great conversation. We enjoy the food. It's amazing. And even when I'm by myself, she's at work, and I'm having you know lunch by myself, I enjoy the food. I savor it. So I encourage you to do the same. Practice being present. Practice being mindful when you are eating, when you are drinking. Enjoy the flavors, the taste. Enjoy it. Okay, now the third way to help you practice mindfulness and to have more mindfulness in your life is to go for a walk. Go for a walk wherever. Wherever it is, it could be inside, it could be outside, it doesn't matter. And then don't put on a podcast. Don't, I mean, as much as I love you listening to my show, thank you so much. Don't for this walk. Don't put on music for this walk. Instead, walk with nothing in your ears except for the beautiful sounds around you. Maybe you're in a city. You hear cars honking and people talking. Those are beautiful sounds too. Maybe you're in in nature and you hear birds chirping. You hear the wind going through the trees beautiful sound. But be aware of your surroundings. Go for a walk. Pay attention to your surroundings, the feelings, the feelings you have as you're walking, the feeling of your foot pressing against the ground. What sensation do you feel as you're walking? What does it look like around you? Now, in that book, Think Like a Monk, it just I just thought of this. He was talking about being mindful, going for walks, and finding a different rock to look at every time. To, to, I can talk, specifically find a beautiful flower, a beautiful rock, or something different every time. So I encourage you, as you're going to work, as you're going for your walk, look for something new each time. So when you're going for your walk, be mindful of your foot pressing against the ground. What does that feel like? What's the sensations of your arms swinging? What about the breath as you breathe it in? Is it cold air? Is it warm air? Is it humid, right? What sounds do you hear? There's so many things that you can focus on. Pick a couple and just be aware of them because that will help you enhance your enjoyment of your walk. But it also brings you down to being present. For me, mindfulness boils down to being present. So many times we want to think in the future. We want to be here, go here, do this, and that's future. And that can cause anxiety and stress and worry. Some of us live in the past, right? Where that's regret, that's anger, frustration, you know, all that stuff, right? That, that's where regret lives, is in the past. We don't need that. You learn and grow from it, and now... You want to be present. So when you're mindful, you're present. You're in the moment. You're realizing the moment. I'm not saying you have to always enjoy the moment. Maybe you're at the dentist and you're getting um, a cavity filled and they have the drill in your mouth. Is that pleasant? 
Not necessarily. I think for most people, not really. But you can be present. You still be mindful of it. Like, okay, I'm getting my teeth taken care of. Awesome. Well, I'm in this. I'm in this building. Cool. We have good tools, right? You can be mindful and grateful for certain things as well. But be mindful. Be present. Enjoy the moment and be aware of the moment. As I said, sometimes you're not always going to enjoy it, but be aware of it. That's the big thing. We love thinking out and about and, and definitely plan your future. Think ahead. Learn from the past. Totally. Use those things to help you. But then be mindful. Be present. Because that's where living happens. You will never get this time back. You can get more money. You can buy new things. You can do different things. But you'll never get that time back. So use your time, enjoy the time, be mindful of it. Don't let it escape you without you realizing it. All right, everyone, I'll let you go with that. Thank you so much for joining me in this episode of the Jones and Four Show. I would love to know one of your takeaways. Let me know, drop it in a comment below, message me on social media at Jones and Four, and let me know your takeaway from today's episode. And if you haven't done it yet, please like and subscribe. Give us a rating. I appreciate all your help and love and support. You are awesome. You are amazing. And I'm so grateful to have you in my life. And I'm ridiculously grateful that you let me be part of your life. So thank you so much, everyone. Have an incredible day. And make sure you check out our next episode because I can't wait to be there with you. All right. Until our next one, have an amazing day. And I will catch you all later.